of Donald Trump versus the United States inside the struggle to stop a president, which now features an afterword that's never before seen reporting. It is out in paperback. I today. want to talk about the constant trickle of information and bullshit that went on behind the scenes in the Trump White House and how we're finally getting an idea of what it was like to be there. Because for the last two years, we have talked about the fact that Jared Kushner, who never managed money for a day in his life, got a whopping $2 billion to manage from MBS. Help us understand how that relationship developed and bloomed while Jared had the inside scoop in the White House. So what I wrote about in this afterward, it's a biography, a 12,000 word biography of John Kelly. And it talks about Kelly's concerns on Jared and Ivanka. He hated their guts. They hated each other. That was pretty clear. But Kelly's concerns about Jared among them were that while he was trying to make Middle East peace, he spent all of his time with the wealthy Arab countries. Jared Kushner's accolades are well known. This son of a bitch apparently was running the entire government at some point. It was even his job to, quote, revamp the federal government. But the reality is, he was just cashing in, just like every other grift in the Trump White House. And Kelly didn't understand why it was just such a focus on the wealthy countries. And was there an ulterior motive to why he was doing that? Kelly did not think that Jared and Ivanka had the qualifications to work in the government. They didn't. To, I mean, no one thinks they did. To work in the government, let alone to have their security clearances, which they had this obvious huge blow up over, and Trump had to order Kelly to give them the clearances over what Kelly wanted. He used his security clearance to make billions because that's who these people are. The entire process of getting into the government was to boost the brand. And oh, how it worked. They made so much money. If you'd like to know more about Jared Kushner, uh, you should Google his father and uh, something called, I believe it was the uh, Red Bull Inn uh, you're going to want to have the safe search off. And I think in terms of Ivanka, he, he didn't think that she came to work a lot and he wasn't sure what she did. And because he wasn't sure of what she did, he wasn't sure why she should have a security clearance. He knew as a national security official how important and sacred it was to have a security clearance and the lengths the government has to go to to give you a security clearance. And he didn't think that it was part of her job that she should have one. And then, of course, apparently there was the constant problems of the bitch fights that were happening. About the showdown between Melania Trump and Ivanka. Ivanka, who thought she should actually be the first lady. Please explain this to us. So Kelly comes in in July of 2017. He thinks that the White House needs uh, order. He thinks that Trump needs to be better staffed. And he starts getting confronted with these issues. And among them that he's told about is that there has been this fight that went on between uh, Ivanka and Melania because Ivanka wanted to become the first lady. But of course, there was a first lady and her name was Melania. But why would John Kelly get involved with that? Wouldn't Donald Trump, the president, say, hey, ladies, let's let's settle down? I guess in a relationship like that, you know, it's hard to say really who is the first lady. Ivanka always thought she was because after all, she was his only love. It was an example to Kelly of the frivolousness of, of some of the issues that were going on. You have to remember, it's in this period of time that Kelly's realizing that Trump is pushing the country to the brink of war with North Korea. And at the same time, he's having to to figure out why Omarosa is having pool parties at the White House to tell her that she can't do that. Omarosa was having pool parties? Are you fucking serious? Jesus Christ. Then, of course, there was probably one of the only people that anybody should feel sorry for in the Trump White House, John Kelly who probably really thought he was doing something good for the country when he became chief of staff. There sure has. You also write that Donald Trump discussed using a nuclear weapon on North Korea. Is that what that? 
So when Kelly comes in, his biggest concern is that Trump is using this language publicly, little rocket man, fire and fury, that's going to set off a conflict with North Korea. And Kelly can't get Trump to stop this. He says, look, thousands of people are going to die. That doesn't get through to Trump. He says to Trump, uh, this could destroy the economy that you've created. That doesn't get through. Trump tried to accuse Obama of getting us into a war with North Korea, when in fact, John Kelly knew it was Donald Trump who was getting us into a war with North Korea. It was only when Kelly appealed directly to Trump's ego and said, look, you could be the first deal maker, the first person, the first American president dating back all the way to Eisenhower to make a deal with this leader to engage with him. You could do that. You're the deal maker. Why don't you do that? Because one of the great unanswered questions of the Trump administration has been, why is it that that Trump went from that crazy language to the love letters? How did they get there? Well, part of the reason that Trump got there was because John, John Kelly, Kelly said, you're the man, big guy. Correct. And Kelly That's knew so what he gross. was doing. <laughs> and Kelly knew that it was not going to lead to a denuclearized North Korea, but he knew that it would lead to a ratcheting back of the rhetoric. And he was terrified that Kim would launch some sort of missile because he was afraid Trump was really going to take action and it was going to set off a conflict that would kill thousands of people and put the United States at war. But like so many other things in the Trump White House, the only way to keep the damn ball in the air was for John Kelly to make Trump his bitch. How do you make Donald Trump your bitch? It's very simple. North Korea figured it out. Just kiss his ass. Tell him how great he is. Tell him what a, what a smart man he is. Tell him how big his brains are and tell him how big his balls are. Hell, if you got chance, throw in how big his dick is. Because that's all Trump cares about. And that, my friends, is how you make Donald Trump your bitch. Like so many have before. And it's this mixture of the, of the frivolous and the extraordinary, you know, the, uh, threat of war that Kelly is balancing as he's taking over as Trump's chief of staff. Fiction writers couldn't outdo what we all witnessed. And that's why anybody who actually still thinks that this motherfucker or anybody like him should be in office doesn't really care about America. I'm sorry, but this is bullshit. These people are nuts. And if you still support them, so are you. I'm Zachariah, Lone Star Liberal. Y'all take it easy. According to a new report, Republican Congressman George Santos allegedly stole $3,000 from a GoFundMe campaign for a dying service dog that belonged to a disabled veteran. And then get this, he used the money to buy dog poison. <laughs> now again, halfway through that joke, I started thinking, how do I think this is gonna go? It's a bad joke, but is it as bad as what he did? Still seems like you guys might think it's a tie. Looks like I'm Congress material.